This is A game, fast acting, long lasting, with no side effects. Hey, all my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel, where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your host, femininity coach and author the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. This is why I always look at it. If you see me do one of those quick numbers, I'll be checking to see if this mic is muted. But anyway, um, I've got a good clip to share with you guys because... We've got another single mom on here on TikTok crying and feeling bad about their choices. But we've also still got this professional victimhood going on. And I just want to sort of share this video with you and point out the problems, not only with this individual themselves, but the problem with the mindset that a lot of Black women suffer from and then they want to suck everybody into that world or into that moment. And we can't we can't do it anymore. Um, these women are miserable. They are coming out more and more and having these moments of clarity and these moments um, where they're sharing with the world just how miserable they actually are and just how close to the edge they are. So. Here's what we're going to do. Let me go ahead. I'm going to share my screen and then we're going to come back and cook. So here we go. Hey guys. Um, so I have been spending the day taking photos for a friend of mine's wedding. I took their engagement photos at a beach about a year and a half ago and now it's time for their wedding. And the honest to God truth is that I'm having a really hard time being here. Um, she has a son, I think he's three or four, um, and she's getting married to her son's dad. And I didn't think it was going to be really hard for me um, until the vows. And, um, you know, it's like one of those moments again where it hits you that you're really a single parent and that your kid's parent decided um, that you weren't good enough and so they decided to leave. Um, and their ceremony was beautiful. Like I, He cried, she cried. There was not one dry eye in the entire church. And one of the things that she said during her vows was, and this is not verbatim, but she said, one of the first promises, and maybe it was the first promise you ever made me, was to always be here for me and our son. And ever since you made that promise, every promise since has been kept. And I just lost it behind the camera. I lost it because... I wish that that was me. And as happy as I am for her, it's really hard for me. And when he started reciting his vows, talking about how much he can't even find the words to explain how much he loves her and just how he'd never ever give up on her and how he just thanked her and apologized for places where he was at fault. Really crushed me. And it just always leads me back to this feeling of just feeling really defeated. Um, and again, it's like, I'm so happy for her, but it's like, God, why couldn't that be me? So um, I'm going to go finish shooting her reception, um, but Okay, let me stop sharing because we got a few issues here that we have to deal with. 
points in her story. She's taking photos for a friend's wedding and she's having a hard time emotionally at the ceremony because the friend is actually marrying her baby's father. The friend is marrying the father of her child, okay? Which is an important point. Because the issue with this young lady here is that she had a child with a man and he didn't marry her. And the only reason that that would be an issue is because she wanted that man to marry her. That was not a situation of having a child with a no good some of a somebody. That wasn't a situation of having a child with a man that didn't have anything going for himself. And it was just like, oh my God, you know what I'm saying? I had this baby, blah, blah, blah. No, this was a situation of that woman was with a man that she wanted to be chosen by. She wanted him to marry her. She had a child for him. We don't know how old the child is. She had a child for him, but that relationship, that marriage did not happen. So we hear her blame the man for the downfall of that relationship. And the way in which she blamed him is that she tells everybody that after X amount of time, this man just decided that she wasn't good enough and upped and left. Now, that, that is not really how men operate. That's a more of a feminine situation, not feeling good enough. But we're going to come back to what that was really about. Then she got to the whole promise situation. Um, that the part in the, her friend's vows that made her cry was how they were talking about how, you know, her friend was saying how her husband promised to be there for her and their child and he's never let her down and things of that nature. And so then she relates that back to herself and talks about basically how the father of her child didn't keep any promises, like it didn't happen, right? So then in the end, she talks about how defeated she feels. And basically, she's telling everybody that she feels like a failure. Why couldn't that be her? Why couldn't she be in that position, right? So she tries to make it known that, you know, I'm happy for my friend, which is, which is to a certain degree is cap because you can't really be happy for other people when you're not in the right spirit. But anyway, what we have here what is one eighteenth of a story that's being told because she didn't want to focus on why that relationship did not work. She just wanted to tell everybody that it didn't. And she was basically making herself out to be the victim of it all by saying he told her she just wasn't good enough. So we're supposed to believe that this man that she was with um, basically did her dirty somehow, did her wrong somehow. And this is how, this is how manipulative women are and manipulative that they try to be with their words when they're trying to tell a story where they need to be the sympathetic person in the story, where they need to be the victims in the story, because now we're supposed to feel sorry for her. And we're supposed to think, uh, ill of her child's father. Oh, why would he leave her? Blah, 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 blah. Here's the thing. These were her choices that she made. Her friend made another choice and she made a choice. Her friend's choices worked out and hers didn't. Cry me a river. She had choices and she made them. She was with that man long enough to do two things. She was with that man, number one, long enough to have a child by him. That was a relationship. That wasn't no one-off, one-night stand type of situation. Not the way that she's feeling about that. The other thing that she was with him long enough to do was to not pass his 4T process. And when I say his 4T process, this is what I mean. She was with him long enough to fail his vetting process. That baby don't make you pass that vetting process. And it doesn't make men stop vetting you. Not if he know what's going on. Because, see, she never said that he was a deadbeat or that he wasn't around that child. She's saying he's not with her. She's being very specific about that. So here's the thing. Somewhere along the line, 
she fell short as a woman. He was vetting her according to those four T's and she did not pass. He was telling her, I guarantee you that he was telling her, he was letting her know these are the areas in which I need you to step up. I need you to step up in certain areas. I need you to do differently in certain areas. I need you to improve in certain areas. I need you to evolve and to grow in certain areas if you want to be my wife. Here's the thing. She either refused to do that she either didn't do that or she couldn't make the adjustment after he gave her the correction and the pathway to the adjustment and to how to keep him. I told you, men tell you three things. Men tell you how to love them. Men tell you how to keep them. And men tell you how to lose them. And he was telling her how to lose me one-on-one -on -one and instead of taking that and being careful about that, she disregarded it and thought that having his child was going to turn that around. Sounds like a man that had his head on straight. Sounds like a man that had his value system intact and wasn't going to let a, a woman, whether she's pretty or whatever, because she's not a bad looking lady. He wasn't going to let that sway him or make him drop his guard or make him stop his vetting process and just get with her or make him bypass all of that and just get with her. No. After some time, we don't know how much time, he didn't decide she wasn't good enough. She couldn't pass that vetting process. And see, sometimes it's not, it's the vetting process. And let me, let me take y'all back a little bit. When men are with you, listen, ladies, let me tell you something. When men are with you and they want to be with you, you get that they want to be with you, but they have not made the, the necessary step or the next step into um, commitment with you. One of these uh, five things is an issue. I'm going to say the four because the five is the marriage market value it's one of these four areas that he having an issue with he's either having an issue with your personal market value who you are as a person he's either having an issue there he or he's having an issue in your belonging market value your reputation the things the, the amount of trouble that you had before he met you and how that is affecting you okay or he's having trouble in your friendship market value, the people you associate yourself with, the people that you spend your social time with, the people that you see eye to eye with and all that type of stuff. He's either having an issue there or he's having an issue with your sexual market value. In one of them four areas, he's having an issue and he is unable to overcome that issue. No amount of problem solving is actually overcoming them and then depending on the man on how much time he want to spend trying to deal with you it's either long haul or a short one where he's like ah uh, no so here's the thing women inherently want and desire men who are individually and unequivocally better than them we desire men who are better people than us okay we want men, women want men who are simply better than them, okay? And only a lion heifer will say different, but women always want a man that's better than them. And we don't respect him if he ain't better than us, okay? Now, with that being said, when he is substantially better than you and all the previous men you've been with, when you stand back and take a, a, an assessment of who you are, who these other men that you've been with in your life are, and who this man is, and he's more than a couple of head and shoulders above you and them, this is when all of those feelings of inadequacy come out. This is when all of them insecurities rise to the surface. And a lot of women fail right there because you meet a man that's better than you. 
Okay, for all intents and purposes, this man should not even be looking at you or in your circle at all. Okay, but the fact that he is, you now feel inadequate and you feel insecure. Hyenas go one way, lionesses go another way with it. Because when you're a hyena, you start making problems in the relationship and a way for him to leave you alone because you know you're not going to measure up. You're too afraid to make the steps and, and have the necessary correction so you can grow. I talked about the growth and the correction. Okay. You don't want to do the necessary correction. Take the humility, take the correction, take the growth and become the woman that he can, that can pass his 4T vetting process so he can go ahead and commit to you. Hyenas don't want to do that. So they start making an excessive amount of trouble for this man and presenting an excessive amount of threat to him where he just back up and say, no, 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 I'm not doing that because this is getting worse and worse and worse as time go on, not better. You're not making any improvement. You're regressing, not progressing. Okay. Lionesses have the humility to take the correction and make the growth and have the necessary steps and do the necessary things. She's listening to her man tell her how to love him, how to keep him, and how to lose him. And so when she, when he convey these things to her, she's listening actively. And what she's doing is saying, you know what? If he's telling me these are the areas that I need to improve, I'm going to do the work to improve them. So these women are coming online and what they're doing is they are having moments of clarity in between the strong and independent fog. Okay. This one may or may not be salvageable, whatever, uh, you know, I haven't seen other TikToks of her. Um, but this is why you as a woman need to avoid the strong and independent. I don't need no man. I'm going to dictate blah, 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 blah. That boss B, all that rhetoric. This is why you avoid going down that road to begin with, because it leads to unfulfillment. It leads to senses of uh, uh, emptiness. It leads to feelings of failure and being defeated because she did fail. She feels like that because she did fail. She knows. See, she, that's a that's a deflection. Oh, he just said I wasn't good enough. No, she knows she wasn't good enough. That's what it is. I met a man. He was better than me. I didn't have what it take or what it took to be this man's wife. I tried to take the shortcut by having his baby, thinking that that would fast track me into the relationship I wanted to be in. But he wasn't her not so fast. He didn't want you to do that. And he dropped you anyway. Dropped you anyway. She couldn't say he was a deadbeat because just from the vibe of how she talking, that wasn't that, that kind of man. He just didn't want her. And he didn't want her for very few specified reasons that he told her she know full and well why that relationship didn't work, that she don't want to face it. And now that she was in that wedding ceremony and watching her friend go through the journey that she thought she deserved, that's why I hit her like that. Lead is strong and independent stuff alone. These women are coming out tell, telling you how it don't, it don't work. It is not working. But what will, I'm going to tell you what's something that will work because this is the type of woman that needs my book. That woman right there is the kind, is the perfect candidate to go to crimsoncure.com and pick up her copy of Reclaiming the Black Feminine, The Lies of Feminism and the Road to Recovery. This is a very powerful work that is available right now on the Crimson Cure website at crimsoncure.com. This is a really transformative work, very powerful, if I must say so myself. And the website that is on crimsoncure.com is beautifully and expertly done. You definitely want to go check it out. So to check it out, the link is in the description box, crimsoncure.com. Click that link so that you can go to the website, be awed by its beauty, and pick up your copy of Reclaiming the Black Feminine. Also, in the description box is the link to Black Lives Matter because we are definitely still on their heads about this $100 million theft and uh, misused donations. So 
We definitely want to get to the next milestone of 15,000 signatures on the petition. So I definitely implore everyone to become a part of this movement. Go down into the description box, hit the link for the petition, sign it, share it, and contribute to it. And last but not least, jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Pick up your copy of Reclaiming the Black Feminine, The Lies of Feminism and the Road to Recovery from Kendra Davis. Hey guys, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.